I stood up for what was right, and I stood up for middle class families. And that is what I will do as the next governor. <laughs> focus on education, on job training, on targeted tax credits that help our businesses succeed. We know that that kind of smart focus works because we have seen it work under our very special guest and great friend to New Hampshire, President Bill Clinton. Woo! President Clinton, we invested in education and in job training, which helped companies and workers succeed. And the economy grew, and middle class families did better. We can do it again, and we can do it here in New Hampshire. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce President Bill Clinton. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you for running. Yes. Yay. I want to thank. Uh, thank you, Bill. Billy Shaheen, <laughs> Betty Lasky, Kathy Sullivan, and all of you for being here. And you know, it didn't take much persuasion for me to come <laughs> to New Hampshire. I love this state. We love, you. we love you. We love you. I had. Enormous difficulty remembering as I scooted up from Boston tonight that I began to make that trek October over 20 91. years ago when I was running for president. You gave me a chance to serve, and for that I am grateful. And I'm here for a lot of reasons. I saw that. Some of the press cynics said, oh, oh, Bill Clinton's just coming to help Maggie son because she supported him and Hillary. There are worse reasons. <laughs> you know, that's true, but it's not the whole truth. I watched her, and I watched the other women who were leading both houses of the New Hampshire legislature in a progressive direction. That's right. And, this state a better and I have followed this campaign. And I was a governor for 12 years. I think John Lynch has done a great job. Yeah. 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 And I think Maggie had quite a bit to do with some of his most important legislative successes. And I believe she has proved that she has the leadership ability, the knowledge, the skills, and the pure grit to keep leading this state in the right direction. And, look, everywhere in the country, whether you're talking about a presidential election or a governor's race, there are basically two huge questions. Who's more likely to get us back to full employment with rising wages, a stronger middle class, and declining poverty? Question one. Question two. What kind of people are we anyway? Yes. Are we going back to our motto out of many one, a pluribus unum? Do we believe that the founders of this country pledged their lives, their fortune, their sacred honor to form a more perfect union? Yeah. Or do we really want to go to this winner-take-all, you're on your own, 
The government is the devil incarnate. Direction that the Tea Party Republican Party is taking. And the two things are intertwined. What do you need? Fainter. We need a doctor? Yeah. Someone coming? Fainter. Okay, you guys make room there. Got some water? Well, it really is a lot. <laughs> I'm sure they got it. It's hot up there with all these bright lights. I'm sure there's some way to get rid of them because I can't see him. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. Give him a hand. So here's what I know. In the years I had the honor of serving, I gave you four surplus budgets. Thank you. Yeah. 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 They always say they're against deficits except when they're in. Mm -hmm. right. And what they really mean is we want to do what we want to do. Right. So you really have a choice here. I mean, this legislature that you have now actually voted to end compulsory education yes. yeah. at a time when education more important than ever. Yeah. They voted to cut the UNH budget by 50% at a time when unemployment among college graduates is half what it is among the population. Yeah. as a whole. They voted to cut the community college budget by 30% at a time when, you remember when I came as president to one of your community colleges? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah Nashville. The, yeah. There are 3.6 million job openings in America today, only being filled at half the rate of previous recession because of the skills mismatch, and the answer is the community colleges. Yeah. So, in Maggie, you've got somebody who opposed the education budget cuts, believes in the community college's ability to train people, wants to have a strong university system, wants to have a research and development credit to bring in technological investment into New Hampshire. And, <laughs> and the legislation that gets all of that and besides doesn't care if kids walk out in the ninth grade. There could hardly be a clear choice. When I first came to New Hampshire, people told me, you, you got to understand, these people are even more independent-minded than people in Arkansas. They don't want anybody telling them what to do, if at all possible. Don't tread on me. Live free or die. No, and then, all of a sudden, you got a legislature that says, when it comes to women making a decision about their bodies, their health, and their future, America didn't mean that. We know better. And we'll tell you what you can do and when you can do it. Yeah, no, that would work. They cut education so they could cut the cigarette tax. Now there's a great, there's a great plan for New Hampshire's economic future. <laughs> Smoke more, learn less. <laughs> Here's what I know. And you know, my, I sell the world's least expensive AIDS medicine in 70 countries. My foundation works in 40 countries. trying to help entrepreneurs in poor areas and reduce the tide of childhood obesity and now trying to help all the baby boomers not consume so many health care dollars that we bankrupt our kids and their ability to raise our grandchildren. Here's what I know. Everywhere in the world, beginning here in New Hampshire, where people get together and work together in good faith 
and try to get something done, good things happen. Every place in the world where there is constant conflict and people are repeatedly pitted against each other, you get paralysis and bad results, except occasionally during campaigns. <laughs> Why in the wide world, since you have a model here and you know what works, wouldn't you take a person who's a proven leader of the Senate, a proven leader of the state, and a proven consensus builder over someone who wants to adopt in real life what so far has only worked in America in politics? Constant conflict and divide and conquer. It's a mistake. Maggie Hassan should be the next governor. concerned about the future of our country. I hadn't really thought by this time I would still be active in public life. I'm trying to do what I can to help the president because I think the issues are exactly the same in Washington. I don't like all this debt, but you cannot get blood out of a turnip. We have to put the country back to work again. We have to have people investing in starting new businesses and expanding employment and bringing back manufacturing and bringing back high-end manufacturing, which includes reasserting our leadership in green technologies, among other things. We can change the way we produce and consume energy in a way that will drastically improve our children's future. But we have to begin with a simple proposition. There is no successful country on earth. If you define success as high employment, high incomes, good job growth rate, declining poverty because poor people can work their way into the middle class. If yes. that's how you define it, every single successful country has both a vigorous private economy and an effective government working hand in hand to maximize the no fault of their own would be left out and left behind. <clears throat> I told Maggie on the way in here, one of the things that I have really admired about her is the leadership she took in New Hampshire on the autism issue. Oh, yeah. I, I campaigned all over this country in 2008. I gave 300 and something speeches. Not one time did I fail to mention autism and not one time, not once, in the most remote parts of South Dakota. For example, wasn't there at least one person afterward who came up and said, my family's been touched by that? We just have to decide whether we're going to be out of many ones or whether we're going back to winner take all and divide and conquer. Turns out, it's also horrible economics. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Don't forget. In the seven years and eight months of the previous administration, before the financial meltdown, before the crash, there were only 2.6 million private sector jobs. That compares with 22 million when I was there. Yeah. Uh, I'm saying that. I'm saying that not to get applause. I'm saying that to say this doesn't work. Why would New Hampshire, with a low unemployment rate, a skilled workforce, a group of people who are small enough in numbers to know each other and work together, why in the wide world would you abandon a proven economic strategy, a proven education strategy, and a proven leader in favor of doubling down on what the Tea Party legislature has already tried to do to you? about this privatizing Medicare business. Oh. <laughs> Look, I hate all this debt. We got to get rid of it, but we can't do it overnight. But let's just remember something. We never had a large structural national debt until 1981, when the first incarnation of this wave started washing over us. 
And the, one of the reasons you elected me president is in the 12 years before I took office, the debt was increased four and a half times. Yes. Then I gave you four surplus budgets. We paid down hundreds of billions on the debt. Then what happened? After the Supreme Court determined the winner in 2000, <laughs> the debt of the country was doubled again. Yeah. So you know what Maggie will do. You know she'll be fiscally responsible. You know she'll be fair to people who disagree with her. You know she will honestly seek the involvement of all people of good faith in New Hampshire. And I'm telling you, it's the only thing that works. Mm. You're right. All You're these right. people, they go around saying they know what the intent of the framers were, and they're going to jam it down our throat, oh. have not really read the history of the constitutional debate. take off philosophy, there would have never been an American Constitution, never been a Bill of Rights, and we wouldn't all be here. The framers actually disagreed among themselves after they gave the Constitution to the states, and it was ratified. Why? Because that's what smart people do. They acknowledge they don't have all the answers. They get together, they disagree, but they adopt a common objective. And then your differences are valuable because you get what you can, you take what you must, and you get something done so you get to show on um, the road. I love being a governor. When I took office, my state was in the midst of a horrible recession that ate the middle of the country alive and eroded our manufacturing base, and it took me 10 long years working with business and government to restructure the economy of our state. When I came here to you, we were leading the country in job growth, but it was a long, hard struggle. We did not pretend there were easy answers, but we did not deny that there were answers. Yes, that's what you want in a government. Somebody that won't put a shine on you, as we say at home, and pretend that it's easy, but also believes in the possibility that people can work together and that government is an important instrument of that working together. This is a huge issue for you. So it turns out that the two big questions, who will get you back to full employment quickest, and what kind of people do you want to be, all lead you to the same place. Maggie. You should elect Maggie. Woo! Let's think about this on the way out. This idea that they have here and in Washington for turning Medicare into a voucher. And as Maggie said, basically the voucher is worth $6,000 less than people are spending on health care. The premise of that is <clears throat> that the worst thing about Medicare is, with all of us baby boomers retiring, it will add to the federal deficit. And that's a terrible thing. Even though, thanks to Medicare and Social Security, if you live to be 65 in America, you're part of the oldest senior population on Earth. Every country with a higher average age life expectancy than us, it's higher because fewer younger people die in other countries. Now, here's the problem with that logic. If I privatize Medicare and tell you to go out into the private insurance market, the problem is in the last 40 years, Medicare has gone up 400% per person in expenses. But private health insurance has gone up 700% per person. So their idea is only thing that matters is what it looks like on an account in the government budget today, even if it means people will have a choice of becoming poorer or sicker or both. My idea is why are we spending 
18% of our income on health care. Nobody else is more than 11 8. It's a trillion dollars a year. Why don't we find a way, this is what New Hampshire would do, to bring our costs in line with our competitors and cover everybody? I know I'm preaching to the saved here. <laughs> but it's very important that you go back and talk to your neighbors about this. Absolutely. It's very important that you talk about her record as a senator. Absolutely. Yeah. That you talk about these issues over which the disagreements are clear. And that you implore your fellow citizens to pay attention to what she says she will do and where she stands on the issues and what her opponents say they will do and where they stand on the issues. The reason, I feel almost bad for the Tea Party Congress in Washington, it might have happened here. They can't imagine why they're at 18% approval. <laughs> you know, laugh, but you think about it. How could they be at 18% approval? All they have done is exactly what they promised the voters they would do in 2010, but nobody paid attention to what they said they would do when they were voting for them because they had that angry rhetoric. Politicians are actually more honest than most people think they are. And you remember this. When you watch those presidential debates, you remember this. They pretty much do what they say they're going to do unless some overwhelming region arises why they shouldn't, or they get blocked. I know Maggie will do what she says she's going to do, and it will be good for you, because you will all be a part of that. She won't promise you miracles, but she will give you progress. And she'll give you progress you can be proud of, because you'll all be a part of it. She won't be trying to slice off older people or gays or poor college students or anybody else to drive a wedge through the heart of New Hampshire to get a lot of people angry and upset so maybe she can just get across a majority vote. She won't do that. She will lead and you will be proud. So, elect her. Thank you. God bless you.